virus, there's heightened concern on how best to prevent and control the spread of the coronavirus across the country, especially after one case. Um, it was announced that a case has been um, identified in the country. With me in studio is Dr. Philip Muthoka, Coordinator Division of Disease Surveillance and Response. He's also a member of the Coronavirus Task Force. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Terry. Let's begin with panic. There's a lot of panic after today's announcement. We've spotted a lot of panic buying across supermarkets. And indeed, Kenyans are asking, Mm -hmm. what is the way forward? What is the state of their health in the country? Is there a justifiable reason to panic? Thanks a lot, Lillian. And thanks a lot for inviting me again to these studios. Um, One, I want to tell Kenyans there is no need to panic. That's one the, the, the first thing. The infection with COVID-19, which has been happening across the world, is only new in the human population, and the kinds of illness it causes have been with us since nine, the actually since humanity. Mm-hmm. Coronaviruses were actually identified in 1960, and since then we have had no more coronaviruses and other viruses causing common cold like um, symptoms in humans. Mm-hmm. So there is no to, need to panic. I am very happy that you have read to them the articulate messages they need to take care of themselves, take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of the community, and don't engage in uh, sending out malicious information, which may cause more panic. So there's no need to panic. And I suppose the, the, the reason why people are panicking is because they're asking, is this a death sentence. How deadly is the virus? And if infected, what are the chances of survival? Um, this is not a deadly virus. Actually, um, even the seasonal influenza, the influenza we get every year, the common cold, is more deadly than this virus. If you look at the statistics of uh, the, mob- the diseases which are causing death across the world, number one is uh, tuberculosis, HIV, HIV AIDS, malaria. Uh, dysentery, which is a uh, um, diarrhea with blood, cholera, pneumonia in young children, and these are killing more people than in, in Kenya than COVID 19 mm-hmm. has killed so far. Because the case fatality rate out of 10 people who are uh, uh, infected with COVID 19, only two are succumbing, and these two are the ones with weakened immune systems in the body. For, for example, persons with, with HIV AIDS, persons with other health problems like um, diabetes, like um, cardiac problems, or people who are under um, to, 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 uh, 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 drugs to, to treat their cancer. Right, so compromised, so the, compromised immunity. Yeah, exactly. Um, so can it be treated is the question that is coming in here. Can coronavirus be treated? Coronavirus is a viral infection like any other viral infection we've ever encountered in this world. There is no definitive treatment. But when you come down with signs and symptoms of coronavirus, which um, are de- debilitating, making you unable to uh, live a normal life, we take care of the symptoms. If you have a fever, we lower your temperature. If you have body ache, we, we take care of that. If you go to the um, ex- extreme of getting a severe pneumonia, we treat the pneumonia. Right. Yes. So let's talk about the gestation period, um, you know, just in line with enlightening um, Kenyans um, on what this coronavirus is all about and what to expect. When infected, you know, at what period or in how long does it manifest? Once the virus is within your body, it can stay for about five to six, six days before it manifests. In the extreme of cases, it can go even up to 14 days before you start showing signs and symptoms. And that's why there's high chance, like the case we got in Kenya, entering the country with no signs and symptoms. And probably it was in in that incubation period. Then um, three or four days down the the line, it starts showing signs and symptoms. Uh And this is what we want to urge all persons coming back to Kenya, whether Kenyans or non-Kenyans, to be that socially responsible. Right. Um, in terms of, because you are in the coronavirus task force, you are a member of the coronavirus task force, so our, pre- our preparedness as a country, how prepared are we to take this head on? I, th- I, I believe we have done a very wonderful job. At least we have 
um, isolation facilities in at least 25 of the counties in this country. At the national level, we have excellent isolation facilities. Mm -hmm. But we, I believe with the, if we look at history and the way it has infected people in the other countries, we may not get those many severe cases to, to warrant anybody uh, right. pa panicking. Because it's only out of 10 people who are infected, only two may progress to go to severe, even less, even about one. Talking about peop uh, persons that have been infected, um, today the first case was detected in Kenya, and therefore the question would be the traceability of the people that the infected person could have possibly interacted with. We know um, that she resided somewhere in Ongata, Rungai. Mm -hmm. So in terms of traceability, <coughs> what can you tell Kenyans as concerns the people that um, the infected person could have come into contact with? It is possible uh, the person who was the diagnosed with um, COVID-19 had interacted with, uh, with, with others. And because we had advised them when they came in, we had advised her at the port of entry, at the JKA, please quarantine yourself and minimize your contact with other people until 14 days are over. Mm -hmm. We have already traced 11 contacts. The initial two which she volunteers to give from then the, the initial two she gave us the we managed to get an extra which to a total of 11. right in the lucky enough in the plane she came with we can trace the passengers who are next to her but at that time she had no signs or symptoms and in most cases you start passing off this infection to others when you start showing signs and symptoms mm -hmm. or to or three days before you start showing and right. it and, and about as, five as, days. as we close now testing capability how adequately equipped are we in terms of testing capabilities when should one be tested and where we we have uh, testing capabilities in kenya we are able to test close to our 200 suspected cases at, at our national public health la la laboratories at the national influenza center where it is housed and um, we there is no need to test anybody who does not meet, meet the case definition. And the case definition is such that you have um, a, a fever you are, and uh, you are depicting the, some respiratory symptoms like cough, difficult in breathing, and you have traveled to one of the countries where there is widespread right. uh, number of cases or you have been into contact with somebody who had traveled to those countries. Yes. If you get a normal flu, we do we don't need to go for tests. Okay, talking about normal flu, Dr. Tari, and this is a hypothetical situation. Mm -hmm. I noticed that mm -hmm. you have a flu currently mm -hmm. because I noticed that you sneezed into yeah. your handkerchief. Mm -hmm. So supposing, um, and I said this is a hypothetical mm -hmm. situation, yes. supposing you are infected right now, we are here conversing, mm -hmm. would I automatically then be infected? And this is while talking to you from this range. Yeah, uh, if you are more than one meter, like now this is about two meters, we are about two, two, two meters, it would be difficult for me to infect you because even if I've got the virus, my saliva as I talk or when I sneeze or when I cough, the, the droplets are heavy and they drop just within one meter, just three feet, mm -hmm. and they don't go beyond that. That's why we advise if you are in a crowded place or you're in a, a congregation, and unless somebody has got flu-like symptoms, please try to stay uh, a meter away from that person. And if possible, um, in, if you have to stay there for long, you can use a mask, a surgical mask. If you, you, you don't have, just use your handkerchief and tie your nose and, and, and mouth so that when... He, he coughs and sneezes, they don't get into to, to you. And also advise that person with the problem the same. Because it's good not to, sp to spill the droplets which are infected to the environment because other people will touch that environment. And that's why we are advising people to wash their hands. And they may touch their face, their hands, their, 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 their nose, their, their eyes, and transfer that infection. Mm -hmm. yes. We thank you very much, Dr. Philip Muthoka, for your time. He's the coordinator, Division of Disease Surveillance and Response, and a member of the coronavirus task force this of course coming after news of coronavirus in kenya where seven people believed to have been in contact with a 27 year old kenyan who tested positive for covid 19 have been isolated as the government moves to contain the spread of the death.